This interview is with Daniel Ellsberg, and he's talking about the importance of leaking. Daniel, did you want to say something about the importance of leaking? <laughs> yes. A very large fraction of what is classified will be strongly protected, not because it threatens national security, but because it threatens the job security of bureaucrats and politicians in the system. And that is uh, the criterion that recounts for most of the secrecy. Now, that includes, then, an enormous amount of information that the public needs to have if they're to be sovereign public and a democracy. Only an informed public can be said to have an effective or useful influence on foreign policy, on domestic policy, on an ability to evaluate the performance and the aims and the values of people who represent them in order to replace them in elections or otherwise, and to lobby them and influence them in various ways. And precisely the information that they need is what is protected in the national security field by the classification system. Obviously, there is a great deal of secrecy including wrongful secrecy outside the classification system, which applies only to the so-called national security area. Corporations with no classification system keep all too many secrets and kill all too many people as a result. The tobacco industry for half a century lied in saying that they did not regard their product as carcinogenic or addictive knowing from studies internally that it was both of those. They committed perjury when they made that statement under oath in recent years. And the documents that someone leaked, Merrill Williams, a paralegal for Brown and Williamson, leaked about 4,000 pages of documents that proved that they were lying about that. And that was the basis for many class action suits. Those lies were costing 500,000 deaths a year in America alone, more than all of our wars together except the Civil War, every year. That's without a classification system. One person provides those documents out of how many thousands who could have done so. Jeffrey Wigand, an official, gave testimony to the same effect. Again, one of hundreds and hundreds perhaps thousands, who could have done so, and he was the one who did it. So you had two people break that wall of secrecy without any threat of prosecution or classification or national security hanging over them. Uh, look at the Catholic Church and the generations, perhaps, of egregious child abuse, ruining the lives of very, very many people in their care, uh, of which there was... Perhaps one, I heard of a whistleblower the other day for the first time, named a priest named Thomas Doyle. My impression had been there wasn't a single whistleblower who went outside the system, went outside the bishops, outside the church, to prosecutors and others, and to tell the victims. Out of how many tens of thousands of priests and nuns who knew that this was going on, and bishops, and knew that people were being terribly harmed by it, in addition to the extreme hypocrisy of people who were actually not only purporting to uh, lay down the law of morality in sexual matters, uh, while themselves being protectors, not just of homosexuality, it so happens they were opposed to homosexuality and made life hell for a great many homosexuals in over generations. At a time when the church itself, it turns out, was, as one person has called it, a, a protective society for homosexuals partly in view of their celibacy rules. But beyond that, a protection society for child rapists. A horrible situation. The point I want to make is that without any threat of prosecution, no threat of being a traitor or unpatriotic by revealing these truths, simply unloyal, disloyal to their organization, their church, and to their careers as priests and nuns or bishops, that kept silence about this human degradation over decades and decades, up till the present, still being covered up by the Catholic Church. So prosecution is not essential to get this kind of performance. Likewise, in other parts of the government, 
dealing with climate, for example, and other matters, or regulation of the pharmaceutical industry. And then you have the in incorporations, the asbestos issue, the uh, various pharmaceutical dangers that have arisen. Monsanto. <clears throat> Thalidomide. Huh? Monsanto. Some yes, yes, been yes, getting yes. Any number of them. Again, you don't need the threat of prosecution. When, however, you have a classification system because there is a legitimate need for some secrets from foreign powers, you can be certain it will be abused and will be used, and not just in an aberrant occasional way, but what will come to be the heart of the system, the, the major part of the system. That means that somehow we have to, if we're to learn what we need to learn to be democratic citizens and to avoid catastrophes, reckless and hopeless and criminal policies like the aggressive war against Iraq or the hopeless war in Vietnam and Afghanistan, deadly wars. To avoid those, you have to challenge the secrecy that makes them possible. 